Okay, well next up into the arena we've got the the Weaving GD 6001T. We've got Simon Weaving here. Good morning, Simon. Uh, good morning, Philip. So, um, what I'd like you to do really is is talk me through the, the, the key features and uh, what you've evolved in this drill, but perhaps for a start, just, just go through a little bit of the history of how you got into drilling as a, as a company. Yeah. Um, so, we were... Um, importers of machinery from around Europe and, and America. Um, the direct drilling really came about, Dad went to Dallas in America and started importing the Krauss no-till drill in 1995 and it sort of evolved from there. That was a box drill. Um, people over here and in Europe wanted air drills and they wanted grain and fertilizer as well and unfortunately Krauss got sold um, so it made we weren't able to sell it anymore and so started out on our mission of direct disc drills obviously the time drills have come in over the years um, but we started out with the caddy system um, with the weaving big disc which is the predecessor to this machine which was a vertical disc drill with uh, wheels running on an angle um, but obviously wheels aren't designed to run on angles you get a lot of wear and then we sold one to a, quite a famous um, direct driller uh, Tony Gent and with him uh, we've developed um, this, this coulter which is nearly 10 years old um, hasn't really changed much in 10 years. There's a few tiny few tweaks we've done, um, but it's very simple, effective, um, and it works. Yeah, and dealing with Tony is, is something that you're always going to get good feedback and thought and new ideas, so it's crushing the hardest in there, yeah? Yeah, you always have to embrace the way he's looking and where he wants to go. Um, he's got amazing enthusiasm uh, for no tillage or low disturbance farming, and yeah, we we talk. Well, I talk to him monthly about different things and techniques. Um, we have got some new ideas on the drawing board at the moment to go forward because it's very important in our game that you're listening to customers and you're listening to what they want and where they want to go to. Um, which is very, very important. And I guess that really comes with the territory. If you start to go down a reduced till route, your soils evolve and you have to evolve with them sometimes, don't you? Yeah, and we have to remember that not every year is the same. Year on year, we get dry years, we get wet years. Um, it's very important that we try and make a machine work to the best of its ability with the conditions we get um, thrown at us. Yeah, absolutely. So with this particular model in mind then, Simon, clearly a key uh, feature of this is the fact that the, the discs are on a, quite an angle compared to uh, what you would have had with your big disc style of drill where they're more or less vertical. So. What advantages do you see in them? Uh, obviously, slot closure has always been um, a crucial thing, and trying to perfect that was always very hard with our vertical double disc opener. Um, so we came up with this idea that you cut into the soil at a 25 degree angle with a double disc. The serrated disc on the outside does the cutting. The little disc lifts the flap of soil. We tuck the seed onto what we call this ledge and then we just gently, with the press wheel, uh, roll it closed. It works on a parallel linkage. Um, you've got 450 mil of coulter travel. Uh, we've got a quick fit C tube here, um, and then you've got a boron scraper to clean the discs inside of the disc. We also use this exhaust boot that we sell to a wide range of um, UK manufacturers now. So we blow the air to the top of this coulter, we diffuse 50% of the air, and then the seed free falls uh, down into the slot and is to alleviate seed bounce and things like that. 
So you've got the best combination of delivery to the outside or wherever it is on the machine in terms of the airflow and then yep. get rid of some of that so that we've got a controlled drop. Yeah, definitely. And also we want to be, we always put our seed in uh, straight vertically and then any companion cropping or fertilizers, they're coming in at the angle. So you get this equal mix. Right, right. And are you finding more and more that farmers are looking to, 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 to grow crops in companion with each other and or, or seed and fert as well? Yeah, we're seeing seed and fertilizer uh, more popular um, because it's more concentrated around the seed. Um, we're also seeing companion cropping um, growing year on year. Um, when I first started out 12 or so years ago, we used to sell time drills with one hopper. Um, now, in the factory at Evesham, it's quite common that you'll see a grain and fertilizer drill going out with a front hopper as well for putting on small seeds and also for putting on slug pellets or avidex out the back. So again, you, you, you can be flexible with the, with, with the requirements. <coughs> in terms of the, the actual discs themselves, I guess because you were being quite subtle in opening a flap for them, call it that. Yes. Um, we haven't got unduly high soil movement in there. No. And that can be a benefit, I suppose, from yeah. the weeds and, and that side of things. In the early days, um, the first one was fixed and you'd pick up speed with it uh, when we were prototyping and it would act like a plow skimmer, if you like. It would cut into the ground really nicely and then it would turn it over and then you couldn't get that flap back. Um, but ever since the GD's been launched, we soon realized that if you make it run on a pivot, um, so it finds its own line, which reduces your disc wear because it's always running straight. Um, we found that it just lifted it, lifted it enough, tucked the seed under, and then it just rolls down. So again, with you having a lot less soil disturbance, with all those benefits, then slightly less mineralization um, probably implies that that <coughs> local placement of fertilizer can be quite useful. Yes, definitely. Whether it's in the big hopper or you put microgranular fertilizer in the little hopper. Now, if you're coming off a heavy cultivation system, we see a lot of customers, they might start out with the low disturbance time drill, um, like our Sabre time, and then they'll move or transition into um, into a disc drill but if you're more of a customer that you've always had discs and you prefer discs I would advise just in the rotation um, a low disturbance subsoiler just to mineralize a little bit of soil um, ahead of something like this because if you're not careful you go from moving a lot of soil to no soil at all it's like turning a tap off and you you sort it just everything's slow to come up. And this is really interesting with how soils evolve and your experiences with your customers that if, they, if they're embarking on something where they've been quite intensive traditionally, yep. then as you say, to like pull a big lever and suddenly go to zero, sometimes the biology is really struggling. With yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and it's like the early days of our vertical disc drill. We used to cut into the soil vertically and you get a V in the soil and both of those walls were shiny and that seed's got to try and punch its way through that that wall to get its roots down before it gets going whereas with this we lift that flap and you basically your roots can go down and your seed comes up and you haven't actually got a defined what you would call a smeared slot in tradition no you've only got one wall not two I, I think that that's got a lot of benefits if the soil is a little bit heavier or if it's got a lot of silt, silty clay or something that's yep. not particularly well self-structuring, then um, would, would you find your, your, your general customers would be driven to thinking about this because of those things, really? Yeah, well, there's a black grass is obviously a big problem. Um, people want to get a stale seed bed and then they want to drill into it um, without moving the soil. It, it doesn't. You don't necessarily need to go direct drilling with this. You can cultivate, roll it, leave it, get the stale seabed, and then just slice into it yeah. prior to. So, one of the 
probably important things if you're going to pre-cultivate would be to keep it firm, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's like most of the distrills on the market, they all want um, firm ground to run on. Over the last two years, we have gone to automatic pressure control. So on this drill, instead of lifting the coulters up on the headland, we lift the whole toolbar, the whole drill. But what that does give us as well is if it's a bit wet and you don't want any wheelings, you can take, you don't get the rear wheel marks. But now with the system that we've got on here, you can go into a field that's got clay at one end and heavy sand, um, sorry, clay at one end and sand at the other. Yep. And the rear wheels will automatically adjust to maintain an, an equal coulter pressure. Um, and it's just transferring weight off the, off the rear wheels onto the toolbar. Right. So that, I guess, might also have a benefit if your hopper is uh, nearly empty as against... Yeah, control. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it just takes a little bit of oil off the fan. Um, it's on a gauge from 1 to 50. Normally, most customers set it at 25. And then you basically, it just floats. And it also helps it pull, its, pull, pull itself straighter um, on banks or hillsides as well. Sure. And you talked me through how much upward and downward movement you've got within the culture units I guess yep. if it because we're not looking necessarily to move a lot of soil then if you have got undulations in the field you don't necessarily have to do unnecessary tillage to to level muck shift you might call it yeah if the if the culture's all cope with that yeah definitely or if you if you've got a deeper tram line or something like that and you want to cut into it it will drop down into that and carry on and, and ma maintain, maintain the, the same, same pressure. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And because we're trying to potentially do very little soil movement, how important is keeping the tire pressures as low as possible on the tractor and and the drill for that matter? Today? Yeah, that, um, that's very important. We just used to use a bog basic tire on the back. Um, we've gone to these um, Mitas um, low pressure wheels. We run them at a bar, um, and then sometimes on our demo tractors we can run them under a bar. Um, but it's down to conditions. Um, tire technology over the last 10 or 12 years has changed massively, um, which is a really real good thing. We also have gone to a hitch, um, a three-point linkage hitch, so you can turn tighter on the headlands. The automatic pressure also does put a bit more weight onto the rear link arms. Yeah. So it means that you can, um, if you're going up a bank, you've got weight on the tractor, so it's not slipping on. A little bit on of weight addition. Yeah. And we, yeah, reduce the percentage of weight, that's good. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of, of size of farm, size of tractor, you've got a fair range you can you can match up to. What What's the sort of range of widths? Um, so the GD range starts at 1.5 metres for vineyards um, and we do that in a 1.5 and 2 and that's got our magnum cedar on the top of it um, so it's basically an accord metering unit with a hydraulic fan and electric metering um, and then the more um, farmer spec machines we start at a grain only 3 metre mounted that mounted range now goes up to a 6 metre mounted um, and then we go from trailed, we go three meter all the way up to eight meter. Okay. And there's some bigger ones on the way. Uh huh. And so really you can cope with most farm sizes and track the pair of climates or yeah, we, outputs. As a business, we like to think that 200, well, between 180 and 240 horsepower is a good size tractor for most farms of the size of kit we are selling. And Operational speed, there, there, there would be limits, but... If it's into lightly cultivated soil, you can do 10, 12, maybe a bit faster. But most people, direct drilling, you're going in the field once, you want to do a good job, um, a drilling at 9.5, 10K. Still get good output. Yeah, and we build our hoppers a bit bigger, so it means you haven't got to fill up so much. Um, and, yes. And control systems and metering on your hoppers? Um, so we run um, RDS Topcon um, metering. Uh, we can run up to four motors on one controller. 
and it can go through the ISA bus if you want. A uh, single set control at the moment. The metering unit itself is actually based on an Accord, but it's our own. Um, so it's 50% bigger, so we can get larger volumes of peas and beans through the metering unit without having to slow down. Um, and it's also stainless steel, so we can put fertilizer through it as well. Did you have to, you found you had to get to that in order to cope with seed requirements and the sort of speed you're talking about? Yeah, well, that sort of stems from the days of um, our weaving time drill, which was very, well, still is very successful in the UK. Um, with the old system, you'd have had to have two metering units on there to cope with the seed rates. Um, so we decided to make a bigger meter, bigger volumetric metering unit. Um, and yeah. So you could, you could hook up to, to control variable seed rate yeah. and obviously a range of crops or a range of, of, of fertilizer yeah. crop, whatever. Yeah, you can do, um, you just flick between which hopper you're using, whether it's grain, fertilizer, slug pellets or Avidex. Um, the RDS system um, is good, reliable, um, and it's and it's also simple, um, and and it's easy, yeah easy to use. Be having a lot of operators get used to that, and it's it's almost not second nature, but not far. Off. Yeah, yeah, and the, and a lot of us in the industry, you we all run the similar control box. So whether you've got one of my drills or someone else's drill, or like we see nowadays on farms, you have both tying on disc uh, or multiple drills on farms. All the control boxes out of UK manufacturers are pretty much the same. Yeah. And your experience with farmers in the UK, what, once they're evolving down this pathway of doing less tillage, I guess it's a little soil type dependent, but how many of those these days would probably run a tine and a disc based drill? Um, you probably, I think over half, maybe 60%. Yeah. yeah. Um, whether they use a disc drill and then a strip till machine, or they use a disc drill and a sabre type tying machine. Obviously, the winter we've just had in the autumn, um, sabre has done a really good job, um, and it's very simple. Um, we've done a the sabre has come on a long way in the last ten or twelve years. Um, it got re vamped in 2019 and we went to the wheels in the middle and four rows because people want more trash flow and and we made the wings pivot um yeah it's been a, a great success and there's bigger ones of that available on the market now as well six is still the most popular size at the moment but i should think going forward the wider ones will be more popular and also we do that in a front tank version so you can buy a saber front tank toolbar and if you wanted you could buy a gd, GD as well toolbar. So you, you could actually have in effect two drills for one hopper yes you could yeah that's more or less what you used to do with the caddy system right? yeah exactly we 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 did really well um with the caddy system it was just a cart with a three-point linkage on the back and we do that in a grain only and a grain of fur and our export market to france they they only want the caddy system because there's loads of little French constructors making tine drill toolbars and things in France, and they want to put the take their discs off in certain scenarios and then put their tines. In. I, I I can see that being very very sensible to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if if we went back to the old Canadian methods, you you'd often get like uh, dealers in Canada would stop the main chassis unit for a drill but wouldn't put the openers on because yeah. they say, well, that's up to the farm. Um, they, they can ship whatever they want. Yeah, so yeah. In a way, I think it's really just underlining how flexible you need to be, but then you get the best out of everything. That yeah, and we, we also have different parts of the country that won't buy a disc drill. They'll buy a tine drill, and they're very loyal um, Time drill men always have been, um, and then you get other parts of the country. It's all desks, and that might be a little bit um, determined by soil type as well. Yeah, and 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 conditions and how much rainfall they're getting and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now, well, thank you very much for 
outlining the no, thank key, you. The key bits to us. No um, problem at all. And um, if anyone wants to know any more, um, pop onto the stand and the team will be there. And we'll also be on farm demonstrations, which is important, important in part of our business um, this autumn. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. A good chat. Cheers. Thank you.